What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email. That's right here. But today, you are tuned in to another episode of The Rundown, where I just give you some very quick and brief opinions on albums, tapes, and projects that I haven't been able to do full reviews for. You know how it goes. Every Friday, there's like a million projects that drop, and I can't keep up. So, once in a while, I gotta do one of these episodes, and it has actually been a couple of months. So let's just jump right into it. We're gonna start off with Gucci Mane's album, Mr. Davis, and I feel like I say the same thing every time Gucci drops a project. He just drops so damn much that it's hard to be excited when he releases new music, and he doesn't really take too many chances. This is really just more of the braggy trap shit you expect from Gucci with a little bit of an R&B flavor because you got Ty Dolla features, Monica, Chris Brown, Weekend, even a couple other sing-songy artists on here, so that was something that was a little bit different. But ultimately, this is just par for the course for Gucci Man. Now there are a couple moments on here that I did like. There's a song called Lil Story with Schoolboy Q. Thought that shit was hard. And Changed with Big Sean was another standout moment. There are certainly some good features on here. Lots of good bangers, as I said. So you get what you sort of expect. But man, there are some horrible tracks on here too. That Nicki Minaj verse on Make Love is one of the worst things I've heard all year. It is worse than fucking feline AIDS, as she says. Let me read this shit to you. This is brutal. I got it in the can. Dole. <sighs> that's just that's just completely garbage. That's awful. No one needs to hear that. And then on the song Money Make You Handsome, Gucci is doing this horrible sing-songy shit throughout. So, you know what? There are a couple moments on here I really didn't fuck with. But for the most part, this is just power for the course for Gucci Man, And I'm going to give him a 2.5 out of five. But we are going to move on to Injury Reserve's EP, Drive It Like It's Stolen, and I actually thought this shit was really dope. I did like their last project, Floss, and I think this one is just as good, maybe even a little bit better. First of all, I thought the songs Boom Times 3 and See You Sweat were just hard as hell. They had that vintage Neptunes flavored production, and hell man, even the bars throughout this project are on point. On Boom Times 3, there's just this great verse from Richie where he's speaking on some of the hip hop fans. You got people out there who don't understand the culture at all, so they're just talking out of their asses. And then you got that problem with old heads who act naive about certain things, including ghostwriting. So that said, there are some good beats on here. There's also some good content, like on the songs Colors and North Pole, where they're speaking on a lot of issues, from substance abuse to race. They really did come through with a balanced EP here, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with their next full project. I would give this one a 3.5 out of 5. I'm not feeling it enough to give it a 4, but 3.5 is good, and I definitely think they'll be even better next time around. Now third up on the list, we have Young Dolph's album Thinking Out Loud, and this motherfucker just has more lives than Jason Voorhees because he's getting shot up every other month, and he's still out here putting in work. This, much like Gucci's album, you get kind of what you expect. A lot of trap bangers, some really nasty bangers in fact, with songs like Pacific Ocean and Drippy, the bass on these tracks, just gonna smack you upside your head. But I do gotta give Dolph some props for actually going a little bit deeper on some of these songs. On While You Hear in particular, he's really just reminding us to show love to our loved ones because you gotta do that while you're here, man. You don't know what's promised, and he really does go into detail by giving us some examples from his life and some of the shit that he's seen his other friends go through. So I think that track was great. I like it when trap rappers get introspective because they certainly have a story to tell. But ultimately, Young Dolph isn't too adventurous with his lyrics and his flow, so this is kind of par for the course, just like with Gucci. But I would give this a 3 out of 5 because it's only 10 tracks, it's about half an hour, so it doesn't wear its welcome out, unlike that Gucci album that kind of drags on because it's over an hour. And I also gotta say, man, there's, there's some bad lyrics on this too. I mean, he's not exactly known as being the brightest wordsmith, and there is one of those, you know, I'm the shit, like diarrhea lines on here. God damn, I'm so tired of these rappers just talking about how they're the shit like diarrhea, like farts. Ain't nobody wanna hear you say you're the shit like diarrhea, or like farts, or turds, or poops, or propped up chocolate dolls in the urinal. <sighs> nobody wants to hear that. Now fourth on the list is Master Killer's album, Loyalty is Royalty. And honestly, man, this shit felt more like a Wu-Tang project to me than that last Wu-Tang project, The Saga Continues. The production on this is absolutely fire if you like sample-based shit, because you're getting production from Ninth Wonder, Ill Mind, and also, I don't want to forget who else was on here, RZA, even Master Killa himself is doing a bit of production on here. So what you get is a nice blend of some gritty sample-based shit, and also some smoother, more wavy type of tracks. So if you like sample-based production, you definitely want to check this out. And bar-wise, it is on point, man. Master Killa has low-key been one of my favorite Wu-Tang members for a while. 
He just has this sort of slick and sneaky style, so I like the way that he approaches the beat. And of course, man, where this is a Wu-Tang solo project, you're going to get a lot of Wu-Tang members on here, man. You got Inspector Deck, you got Jizza, you got Method Man, and hell, you even got all kinds of names you never heard before, but they're still snapping. So I think this is great. Production is on point. The features are on point. And you know, content-wise, it doesn't really get too deep. This is kind of just your boom-bap hip-hop shit with a lot of bars for the sake of bars. So I'm going to go with a 3.5 out of 5 here. I definitely recommend it, especially if you like sample-based stuff boom bap stuff and you are a Wu-Tang fan, it just seems like the Wu-Tang can't get a group project coming out at 100%, but these solo releases have been pretty tight. And the next project I'm going to speak on is J.I.D.K.'s album, I Was Very Bad. This is an artist who I wasn't really too familiar with, but tons of people were requesting him, and I gotta say, this is a pretty damn good project. <clears throat> as my voice cracks, but I ain't lying. My voice ain't cracking because I'm lying. I'm just being honest with you, man. This is a pretty nice project. I do like the narrative throughout because he's telling the story of how he came from this good home, but he still got caught up in the streets and went to jail. So he does a good job of painting that picture and letting you know who he is. In particular, there are some pretty deep moments where he speaks on the relationship with his mom, who is just this traditional African mother who is very hard on him. So he's speaking on how at times he felt like she didn't love him, but really she just wanted the best for him. And then she passed, so he had a hard time dealing with that. Before that, when he was in jail and all his friends had turned their backs on him, his mom was there. So there's really this interesting dynamic that he's speaking on in that way, and I think that was really one of the highlights of this project. Production-wise, though, I felt like this shit was all over the place. Not even to say that these tracks are bad, but you're going to get some beats that are kind of reminiscent of Vince Staples shit, just some jangly drums, thick bass, just sort of a different sound to it. Then you're going to get some soft strings on tracks, some wavy, lovey-dovey fuck tracks, boom bap tracks. This shit is just all over the place. And in a way, that's good because he is showing versatility and that he can do different sounds. You even got a song on here called Pizza Shop where you get MF Doom and Del the Funky Homo Sapien coming in. So you can't really hate on that. But my main point here is I like the narration that really keeps this project tight. But... Next time around, I'm hoping that maybe sonically it's a bit more cohesive because I felt like this shit was just all over the place. In spite of that though, I'm going to go with a 3.5 out of 5, man. Definitely check this out. If you haven't heard of him, don't be turned off by that. I think he's a new artist who really we're going to hear a lot more from and he's showing what he can do here. So I look forward to hearing that next project. But the last project we're going to speak on is one that's kind of confusing to review and rate. I'm talking about Yellow Wolf's album, Trials by Fire. Now, Yellow Wolf, of course, got into the country shit with Love Story. He sort of built his way up towards that and then really ran with it. But on that album, he also came through with some of that more traditional Yellow Wolf sound that a lot of us liked. We got some bangers on there, some more, you know, traditional rap type of shit. But this one, goddamn, he went all in on the country shit this time around, man. I'm talking about Kid Rock features, Winona Judd features, lots of harmonica, twangy-ass guitars. This is really just more country than it is rap, in my opinion. Well, no, I don't want to say that. That's, that's, that's not really true, because he's still rapping his ass off on here. And the bars and content are actually on point. He's really going into detail about his personal life, fears, struggles, doing some storytelling. So on that front, I love it. Like... This really feels like one of the best Yellow Wolf projects as far as bars and content. But the sound is just like, <sighs> I didn't mind the country sound on Love Story because like I said, that was a more balanced project. He kind of eased his way into that country shit and we really were kind of surprised by that. Like, wow, Yellow Wolf was taking some chances here. But now that he's just all the way country, doing his own thing and his own sound, which I can appreciate, I just can't really fuck with this, man. I'm not that into country music that even if the bars are good and the content's good, I can really vibe with it. But that's not to say it's a bad project. I would give this a 3 out of 5. I think it's definitely worth your time. But how you feel about it is really going to have to do with how you feel about country music, man. This shit is just so damn country that even if you like the bars and content like myself, I'm not sure you're going to get a lot of listens out of it because you probably don't want to hear all that twangy shit and some of those country features. But if you loved all that country shit Yellow Wolf was doing or you're a country fan in general, I could definitely see this being something that might make your year-end list. But hey... There you got it, man. Another episode of The Rundown. Kind of gave you my quick, brief opinions on these projects. Kind of ranted about a lot of them and got all over the place. But that's how I like to keep this series. I just like to make it clear that I'm giving you my straight-up opinions. Like, I listened through all these projects, one full listen, went back and dabbled with a couple tracks, but I didn't really sit there and break everything down. It is what it is, man. Let me know what you think about these projects. If you have more to say, if you want to expand on it, by all means, that's what the comments section is for, is having some great discussions. So make sure you hit me up. 
And of course, make sure you hit me up on all my social media, man. You know where I'm at, and you want to show me love and show me lots of it so that the world can be a better place, goddammit. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.